How can I realize my potential more fully? That's a question I still ask myself, especially when contemplating what's next in my life. In every job I've taken, in every city in which I've lived, I've known that it's time to move on when I've grown as much as I can. Sometimes moving on terrified me, but always it taught me that the true meaning of courage is to be afraid and then, with your knees knocking, to step out anyway. Making a bold move is the only way to advance toward the grandest vision the universe has for you. If you allow it, fear will completely immobilize you. And once it has you in its grip, it will fight to keep you from ever becoming your best self. What I know for sure is this. Whatever you fear most has no power. It is your fear that has the power. The thing itself cannot touch you, but your fear can rob you of your life. Each time you give in to it, you lose strength, while your fear gains it. That's why you must decide that no matter how difficult the path ahead seems, you will push past your anxiety and keep on stepping. A few years ago, I was writing this question in my journal every day. What am I afraid of? Over time, I realized that while I'd often seemed brave on the outside, I'd lived much of my inner life in bondage. I was afraid that others wouldn't like me. I was terrified that if I said no to people, they would reject me. Everything I did, thought, felt, said, or even ate was connected to the fear I carried around with me, and I allowed it to block me from ever knowing who I really was. Dr. Phil often says, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. Before I could challenge my fear and begin changing what I believed about myself, I had to admit that, yes, I had always been afraid and that my fear was a form of slavery. Author Neil Donald Walsh says, so long as you're still worried about what others think of you, you're owned by them. Only when you require no approval from outside yourself can you own yourself. It's true that when you summon the courage to cast a vote for yourself, when you dare to step out, speak up, change yourself, or even simply do something outside of what others call the norm. The results may not always be pleasant. You can expect obstacles. You will fall down. Others may call you nutty. At times, it may feel like the whole world is rising up to tell you who you cannot become and what you cannot do. It can upset people when you exceed the limited expectations they've always had for you. And in moments of weakness, your fear and self-doubt may cause you to falter. You may be so exhausted that you want to quit, but the alternatives are even worse. You might find yourself stuck in a miserable rut for years at a time, or you could spend too many days languishing in regret, always wondering, what would my life have been like if I hadn't cared so much about what people thought? And what if you decided right now that you will stop letting fear block you? What if you learn to live with it, to ride its wave to heights you never knew were possible? You might discover the joy of tuning out what everybody wants for you and finally pay attention to what you want and need and learn that ultimately you have nothing to prove to anyone but yourself. That is what it truly means to live without fear, and to keep reaching for your best life. The true measure of your courage is not whether you reach your goal, it's whether you decide to get back on your feet no matter how many times you failed. I know it is not easy, but I also know for sure that having the courage to stand up and pursue your wildest dreams will give you life's richest reward and life's greatest adventure. And what's really wild? Right now, no matter where you are, you are a single choice away from a new beginning. One of my defining moments came in the third grade. The day a book report I turned in earned my teacher's praise and made my classmates grudgingly whisper, she thinks she's so smart. For too many years after that, my biggest fear was...